Hello, and welcome back to Bite-Sized Neo4j for Data Scientists. Today, we're going to transition into a new subject area that will be the subject for the next several videos in this series. Um, we're going to talk about how to use graphs in machine learning. But in order to do that, we need to turn our graph into a vector or an embedding. So I'm going to talk today about one of the easiest ways of doing that, which is the FastRP algorithm. My name is Claire Sullivan. I'm a data science advocate at Neo4j and here's how you can find me on Twitter and on Medium. As a reminder, these are the three links that are important to our series. The first is how to create a free Neo4j sandbox instance. The second is where you can find all the previous videos for this series. And the third is the repository that contains all of the code. Now today we're going to be talking about the FastRP algorithm, and there's a fair bit of math that goes into it, less so than some of the other embedding techniques, but here's a couple links that you can go and learn more about this algorithm. I won't have time to talk about it much, but the first link talks about the math behind FastRP, and then the second one talks about how you can tune the hyperparameters that we're going to see today to a specific machine learning problem. So let's get started. We're going to use a new graph. This is a pre-populated graph uh, within Sandbox, and it's of the Paradise Papers. Uh, these are some famous, uh, it's a famous graph that came out a few years ago looking at the connections between people and some key offsite hold, offshore holdings that might have been used for inappropriate behaviors. So if we go into this graph, you'll see that there's actually a guide where you can go through the entire thing. But we're going to start by just looking at the graph and see, seeing what's in here. Okay, so I'm going to use this DB schema visualization to do that. And here's what I get. Let's separate this out a bit so we can read it. Okay, so my red node corresponds to addresses. My blue node is intermediaries. Green is officers. Orange is entity. And there's this other thing called other. Um, so let's just have some fun and let's look at the officers between um, entities and inter intermediaries. That's one type of relationship we have. You can see this relationship called officer of, um, and it's common between those three types of nodes. So what we want to do is we need to, like everything else using the Graph Data Science Library, we need to create an in-memory graph that we will use for doing our calculations. So here I have... Um, the graph that we're going to create, it's going to be called officers. And this graph is going to have three different node types, officer, intermediary, or entity. I'm going to leave other out of this because, you know, other. Um, and then we are going to have the relationship officer of, and we're going to say that that relationship is undirected. Now, in reality, in this graph, it's not. It's a directed graph. However, many of the algorithms within GDS prefer um, an undirected graph. So in doing so, what we're going to do is we're going to create basically double the relationships. We, we create a new relationship going the opposite direction of what we already had. Okay, so here's our graph. Now we're going to get to the fun part, which is how to actually create the embedding. So the fast RP embedding, as one might take from the name, is fast. Okay, let's, we're going to stream this to the screen, you know, just with the dot stream function. Okay, and we're going to operate FastRP on our in-memory graph. Um, and just for fun, we're going to say we, are, we want a 10-dimensional embedding. Now, you could have this be any number you want, um, but just, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use the number 10. Now, there are a few different hyperparameters that we can tune here, and some of them are a little easier to other, understand than others. For example, normalization strength. What this does is it normalizes the degree of all of the nodes. So basically what you're doing, like in any normalization approach in ML, um, we're getting rid of the influence or minimizing the influence of nodes that have a high degree. Typically, the normalization strength is somewhere between minus one and one. Then there is this concept of iteration weights. This is a little bit more subtle to understand. It's based on the math of the fast RP or fast random projection algorithm. And basically what we're doing here is we're hopping around the nodes in this graph in some sort of random walk fashion. And the the weights that we have here represent the probability of going from node 1 to node 2 in exactly one step, exactly two steps, 
exactly three steps. Um, and in fact, you can extend this out as, as far as you want. You, um, four is a pretty common number. The authors of the FASTRP paper, the original paper, noticed that when you ignore those nodes that are directly next to your target node, you tend to get better results. So you, you just ignore those and you start saying, okay, after that, here's the probability of reaching node one to node two in exactly three hops. So that probability is one. You can actually reach there. Um, so these, um, let's just give this a run. Okay, and it's gonna take it a second. But what we're going to find out, what we're going to see is that we can get a nice vector. Just all we're talking about is a list of floats here. Here they are. Um, that's all this is. That's all embeddings are. But in this case, unlike traditional machine learning approaches, we have a list of floats that's associated with a graph. Now, you could think about what we might do with that down the road, which I will show you in future videos, might be something like, oh, I don't know, plugging them into a machine learning algorithm and doing things like um, some sort of prediction or classification on it. So stay tuned for that in future videos. I do want to remind you of those two uh, different blog posts. There also on my Medium profile, so you can go look at them there. And with that, I just want to say thank you for tuning in. Please reach out to me on Twitter if you have suggestions for future videos, and we'll see you soon. Bye.